que ele vem constantemente para doar. Tá cobrado para cada quarto, para o seu color, ah, ele rende, tá para o ri, ah, o povo respeita a vida, para o povo, a vida foi ficar o poeri, e quando o ri que foi ficar o ri a ser vida, tá com ele, 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 tá com ele,
and that calling is still very much alive today. And I was telling uh, Pastor Habili, not many of us are still alive. Many are now in heaven uh, with Christ. So uh, the few that are remaining, they must work harder Amen. to complete the calling. So I'd like to uh, recognize you. It's good to see you. Also, I'd like to thank you, uh, Pastor C, for honoring us with your presence this morning. It is up to you. And all of you who are here. I love Jesus. He is the treasure of my life. I walk everywhere I go. It's the voice of Jesus himself. My life is an expression of who he is today. So today, I'm going to say something with you. But before I do that, I'd like to say a few words to the marriage couple. You see, in my life, he said, I don't, I don't worry about saving. Satan is not a factor in my life. Satan is afraid of me. Just as he was afraid of Jesus. Everywhere Jesus showed up, Satan was afraid. Today I have the life of Jesus in me. So when I come to New Zealand, Satan is afraid. Why? Because he know the greater one has arrived. Who is the greater one? The Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells me when I'm born again and I open my heart to receive the Holy Spirit today, the Holy Spirit lives in me. So everywhere I go, the Holy Spirit goes. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, this is for uh, Leola in Sepinta. Sepinta and Leola. And for all of you, because I know some of the things I'm going to say is going to be new to you. Psalms 127 is one. You can read it in time. Let me read it in English. Except, I think it would be good if you put it up there. Eh? Yeah. Put it up there so that all of us can look at it as we read. I, uh, my driver brought me today. My driver brought me today. <laughs> and she said they, they were here last Sunday. <laughs> and uh, it was good service. <laughs> and I said, why? Because the sermon was short. <laughs> and I was sitting there and I said, wow, you're going to be shocked today. <laughs> because my sermon is never short. <laughs> she God has a word for you. I'm the the of the 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 greatest treasure on earth today. 
There's only one. It's the word of God. Nothing in this world is more important than the word of God. And as a Christian, I hope that all of you are Christian. The word of God should be the number one possession of your life. Because if not, then whatever you treasure is not going to help you in life. Only the word of God. And that's what we're going to look here. Go ahead and read it in time. You know, for you and for every person here, unless God heals your family. Your family will crumble. A whole lot of food. Mau mau. Find the dark end. Hard. The only thing that will build it is God. But how does God build a house? Every person knows that if God built a house, it will stand the storms of life. But how does God build a house? I'll show you two things God used to build a house. Two scriptures. Number one, the book of Acts, chapter 20, 20, verse 32. 32. There we are. This is Paul saying goodbye to the church in Ephesus. Uh, this is Paul saying goodbye to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesus. And this is his farewell words. And this is my words for you. Look at what the words say. If you have a Bible, just read it alone. Eh? So that, you know, we can make it short. Praise God. <laughs> you know, laughing doesn't come when people end in you. You don't know any poem. You don't know. Kata Kata is a spiritual health. I cut out all the time. Praise God. I'm happy all the time. So when I laugh, when I want to laugh, I laugh. I don't have to feel like laughing before I laugh. <laughs> because laughing is a spiritual matter. And I'm showing you something today. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 which is April, everybody say April, to build you up. Huh. And to give you an inheritance. Huh. That's the only thing that will build your life. The word of God. Money, 
But when you come to church, ah, you see, everywhere I go, I carry my Bible. Because I know my Bible is the answer for me. Whatever I need, I have I don't have to worry about money. Because money comes to me. Hallelujah. Because my Bible tells me my God shall supply. I don't depend upon money. I depend upon Him. He is my source. Let the word of God be number one in your life. Because the word of God will solve every problem that comes to Be connected. With a place that keeps you the true word of God. Because only when you have the right word of God will be you. I'll leave number two. I won't tell you what number two is. Because I think this is enough. You know why the word of God is so important? Because uh, when a person becomes a Christian, when you are born again, you become a spirit being. And the food for the spirit person is the word. The less of the word of God you know, the more your life will be dominated by the circumstances of life. Because you will become a person who is no different from the sinners of the world. You, you have to help me, eh? I'm going to just keep scriptures. So your life will be great, eh? See, my, our lives will be great. Because the Word of God will be the number one person. We will grow in the knowledge of the world. And we will discover what belongs to us in Christ. Happiness, prosperity, health, peace, joy, everything that God has. We claim it and we'll walk in it. Because it is our right. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm sorry because that's how my life is. Right? I walk in prosperity, in health, and in joy. All my children never straight from me. Now, I'm going to take a hit.
na na o fanga tapu ni na o kei vare vare o a ke a hoi o na o kei uku ke e ki pa o tapu lai na o na o faifu ka. Amen. That's the proof of the cost of the lie. Okay. You are so blessed. This is a great day for you. What I want to talk to us about today is. Uh, I want us to look at John chapter 10. See, you see, anybody here who doesn't have a Bible, I feel sorry for you. The queen came up and said, no, 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 Stella. 
And gave her a hug. And she said, Tell Pastor Caleb, we love him very much. And say to him, Thank you for what you have told For the kingdom of God. What am I doing in Tonga? I'm doing the same thing I'm doing here today. Yeah. To help you see that if you are Christian, you are the salvation for the country of New Zealand. You have got to know who you are. You are the channels by which God blessed. He's not going to raise money from heaven. He can't even forget who I am for the land of the heaven. Huh? He can't even forget who I am for the land of the heaven. For the four ihokato. Say amen. Hallelujah. Ah. I see a few doors that are closed, closed. Let's look at uh, John chapter 10, verse 10. And I'm going to see if I can uh, just. So you can see now, it's not good to say if God was to build a house, then everybody lay in vain. Now you know how does God build a house by you knowing the will of God. That's how he built your house. It's not good asking, God, build my house, build my house. Huh? And God said, I have given you the tool. Huh? And you said, no, 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 I want you to build a house. And God said, okay, I've done everything. Now you do whatever you want to do. So you keep asking all the time. I'm not going to thank you for the fire. I'm not going to thank you for the fire. I'm not going to thank you for the fire. Ah. And God said, I can't do anything for you. He can't help you. Huh? But we like singing songs that make us feel spiritual. Huh? And then we cry. And then we go and say, hey, that was a spiritual sense. But as soon as you walk out the door, the feeling is gone. <laughs> and the same problems you walk in, you walk out with. <laughs> but if you come in and we see the word of God, <laughs> the word of God will solve the problem you walk in with. <laughs> when you walk out the door, it will be a totally different person. Why? <laughs> Because the word is coming to your heart and giving you close. See, I, I'm, I'm challenging you to trust up the word of God. Start with the word of God and your life will go one way only. Upward and forward. I want to tell you, I don't have any problem. Listen to me, I don't have any problem. Oh, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. Because the word of God tells me I have no problem. I'm never going to believe anybody who tells me. You know, some people said, ah. But we are still in the flesh. And I told them, but I'm not in the flesh. I'm born again. I'm before I was in the flesh. Yet you are not in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. I'm not in the flesh. Before I was born from my parents. Therefore I was like them. Oh yeah, I'm the I'm dominated by 
sheep. But then I was born again. And I was both of God. The life that I have now is the life of God. I don't have my parents' life anymore. I'm not the same person as I was before. I'm a Christian. The challenge then is this. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe your parents? Are you going to believe your friends? Or are you going to believe the word of God? I believe the word of God. It doesn't matter what anybody says. When I went to Tonga, one man. See, I want you to know I am an ordained minister with the sons of God of Australia. I am an ordained pastor now with the Australian Assemblies of God. When I went to Tonga, everybody did not want to believe the message that I bring. They say, how can you say you don't have any problem? Every one of us, these are pastors. How many of you have problems? Don't lift up your head. <laughs> So they came and they said, How can you see? And I spoke on TV and I said, I'm the answer for Tom. And every pastor was very upset. So everybody said, Your work will die. It won't last long. Ah, that was 2011. Today, my work is the work that is blessing the whole of Tonga. Last year, more than 20,000 people from all over Tonga called in and thank for the knowledge of the word of God they are receiving. From you to you are buying Mabaku, Tonakaku, and even as I told you, even the parliament were talking about me. There was a big denomination that wanted to sue me. And so they went to the minister of police and, and, and uh, complained to him. He looked at their letter and he said to them, I believe, Pastor King. I'm standing with him. What he's doing is good for Tonga. And they close the whole issue. But I'm ready to face even the talk I go, even the Mama Fall, they all call and thank me for what I'm doing. Because nobody can deny the power of the Holy Spirit. Today my church in Nukalofa is more than 200 people. And it's right across from Colony, Kuniko. Eh? But okay, let me let me uh, just give a full hand on our clothes. <sighs> Look at what the, the Bible says. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I want you to look at the last card. <coughs> the 
So I want all of us to listen to get our love. Taha, Kuo, To. Jesus is speaking here. Jesus is speaking here. Jesus said, I am come that they might have a life and have it abundantly. So listen carefully. This is what Jesus said. I have come that you might have a life to the full so that it will overflow. That's what Jesus came to do. I have come to give you life so that you live a life that is always overflow.
con un cristianismo y con un hijo conforme a tu vida. Como hoy en la torre, si son de la mano. Why? Let me, let me just point out some words there and get in there. I am come that they might have life. There were the life there. And they were the life there. And they were the life there. Oh, how we are here, Kaliki, go Zoe. Go how was she shook and was she shook? Go how can we mau I mui? I have come that you might have life. The Zoe. Which means that everybody else, the life that they have, is not so alive. See, so alive is God's life. Up to this time, nobody was any poor. From Adam to the day Jesus Christ was on the earth, nobody was able to help this kind of life. Everybody has the parents life. And the life in Greek is suke. Okay, to demonstrate the chapter to first Corinthians, chapter 15. Okay, we get uh that day. No, no, we don't go to the door at any mark. You see, when the word becomes the life, you are the word. Look at there. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. So what happened then? 
Verse 16, verse 17. God told Adam not to eat from the fruit of the trees of good and evil. But they ate. And what happened? They died. I'm, I'm summarizing the disorders. I'm trying to come to the end of my story here. They died. But they were still walking around. So, from God, death is not when your body is put in the grave. From God's perspective, death is when you are separated from Him. So, that day, man was separated from Him. And from that day, man's life was run by the flesh, by the tongue. Even today, every person that's not born again is controlled by the flesh. They are walking around, but they are dead. Why? Because they are separated from God. From God, they can, it's no good crying to God because God can't hear you. The only time God can hear you is when you come to Him in salvation. Because the Word of God now has deposited into your spirit and you have faith and faith connection with God. So what I'm saying here, Jesus came to bring us spiritual life. Because all of us were dead. Nobody has to die. But then he died. And then he rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, and the Bible tells us, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Yeah, I'm going to try to close here. Ah, you got it? Okay, put it up there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Hmm. The old things pass away, the old things have come new. What happened? When you come and you hear the word of God and then faith rises up in you and then you lift your hand and you come to the front and confess Jesus as the Lord of your life. That moment of confessing Jesus as Lord of your life Loma Mahmoufuru, eh? Romans chapter 10. Loma Mahmoufuru. Verse 9 and 10. Uh, and 10. Let's just see what I'm going This is the only way of being born again. The leaders shall confess with their mouth that Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved now. There is no other way of being born again except through him. Number 10. For if the heart men believe, Uh, you want to read this then? Uh, Verse 10. And last part, and with the mouth confession. And to salvation. So the only way to be saved as a Christian is to work God to come into your heart. And you believe. Once you believe it in your heart, now you are ready for salvation. Then you come and confess with your mouth. As soon as you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord of your life. When Jesus becomes Lord of your life, that's when he comes into you and give you Zoe life. And replace your own life with his new life. 
And from that day, you now ready but for you to experience a life that is full is go back to what I said in extra verse 32. No, no, uh, X, now. And the word of God, the more of the word of God knows you as uh, 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 get into your spirit. The more you become the new person. And the more you demonstrate the life of overflowing. Amen. 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 Amen.